Now we play a round called Danger, Danger, Subatomic Joke Collider. <laughs> this game involves Michael, Andy, Frankie and Russell. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performer stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners of the team might judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> the first subject is television. Who wants to come in that? Frankie! It's so, it's so patronising, television, isn't it? I saw a show the other day, and it was like, how to sell your house, kind of thing. And they said, if someone's coming round to view the house, remember to open your curtains and tidy up. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. I'd been planning on redecorating using diarrhoea pills and stencils, <laughs> then shaving the word welcome into my dog's back. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a show for the first time the other day, You Are What You Eat. When a woman gets a trestle table of food in front of a fat person and they have to pretend to feel guilty as she shows them their dream buffet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Could you give me five minutes on my own here? <laughs> You've got to be careful what you say on telly. I did a cookery show and it was 10 in the morning and it was live and it was the day of the Glasgow airport attack and the presenter said, oh, you do topical stuff, don't you? And I said, yeah, like today, we don't know if that was terrorists or just Richard Hammond turning up late for chicken. <laughs> you don't want to have to whisk eggs for 20 minutes while a studio full of people hate you. <laughs> 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 See, political correctness is all over television. <laughs> Apparently, on television, we're now not allowed to say fairy lights because it might be homophobic. <laughs> Apparently, now we've got to call them poof lanterns. <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is modern living. Who wants to come on that? Andy Parsons. Now, apparently at the next election, we're all going to be able to vote by text. Now, I can see that going tits up, particularly with predictive text. <laughs> People voting for New Labrador. <laughs> Conservatory and the literal demagogues. <laughs> and I've got to be honest, I am no fan of mobile phones, particularly because you can no longer, can you, call a wrong number. Call a wrong number, don't you? Half an hour late, you get called back. I believe you just called me. <laughs> I've got a wrong number. No, no, Sonny Jim, what was it you wanted to say? <laughs> well, I like at that point, I like to go, <sighs> <laughs> Brilliant. I get to make a dirty phone call, but they've had to bloody pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves us with Michael and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. Next topic is drugs. Who wants to come in on that? Russell. Good laugh, mate. <laughs> um, I get offered drugs loads. I was at Glastonbury this year, right? And uh, this bloke came up to me, he's like, oh, mate, do you want some shrooms? And you're quite tempted, because everyone's like, it was amazing, man. Had a chat with the tree. Good guy. It was called Nathan. You'd love him. We could play racquetball Thursday week. What a chap. But <laughs> you know if you took mushrooms, you'd be the one who would have the story that would end up on the front page of the papers. Do you know what I mean? I killed a lollipop lady. <laughs> she wouldn't let me lick it, and I killed her. So... <laughs> So in the end, right, it was really embarrassing. I had three packets of Starburst just shoving them in front of my tummy, like, nom, 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 nom. And I was like, my guts totally gave way. And this lovely old lady came up to me and was like, are you all right? Now, you've never known being truly pathetic until you've looked into the eyes of a kind stranger and gone, I've eaten too many sweets. <laughs> there you go. There you go <laughs> OK, Michael, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is grooming. My God. Right. <laughs> um, people like my hair, though. I do gigs and people come up to me after the show and they go, I loved it. I go, what part? And they go, your hair. It moves around when you tell jokes. <laughs> and people find it funnier than me. And I'm worried I'm going to wake up bald with a note. I've gone solo. Yeah. I obviously don't need you. <laughs> I'm touring. Um, I never understand the end of a haircut, the, the mirror bit. There's this, like, this, this strange... Men don't want this bit, OK? There will be a back-of-the-head mirror. It's a mirror specially designed for the back of the head. They will fetch the mirror. Man is already thinking, I don't want this, I don't want this. And then they present to you the back of your head. It's a <laughs> surreal moment in life. It's you looking at the back of your head. For the only time in life, you see the back of your head. <laughs> and I think in the history of hairdressing, no man has reacted at this moment in any other way other than... Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't even know it's my head. For all I know, it's just a photo of his best ever head. <laughs> I don't care. It's of no interest to me. Do people go, I love it, I'm leaving backwards. Woohoo! Thank you! Point there, go to Frankie and Michael.